And then I just need to remember to hit the save button. It hasn't happened in this class yet, but in a few Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 classes, I forgot to hit the save button. All right, so similarities and proportions. So the reason why we talked about dilations is similarity and proportions have to do a lot with it. So um, kind of like when you guys studied slope, in algebra one, um, the way we do scale factor is the, is a fraction also. New over old is always how I do scale factor. New over old. Um, I know it's like supposed to, I think I mentioned this before. Oh. I mentioned this before where it's supposed to be um, the figure over the original, but I just like calling it new over old. So proportionality is the idea of like sides having the same fraction. So for example, they do this a lot with the triangles. It's very popular triangles because you can see it a lot easier in triangles. So if you say this is two and this is four, you can say this is one and this is two. You can see the sides get smaller. It's two over four, one over two. And what's interesting about that is you have to see it as Again, new over old. So it's one over two, or see it as two over four. And we're gonna see what theorems prove that something is similar to something else. So similarity is just this idea that all the angles are equal, but the sides might not be equal. They're, the sides are what are called proportional. Not necessarily that they're not equal, it's that they're proportional. All right, so for example here, if we make a triangle and then we extend the triangle, it's still proportional because this angle is still the same. And so this angle is the same for both of them. And then this angle is the same for both of them. So if we know what this over this is, we can figure out what this side is by using proportionality. So they're just doing the introduction, like how can we figure out how far away C to E is if we don't know it? But if we know this information, can that help us out? All right, so we're going to talk about parallel lines and how that's involved in similar triangles. So parallel lines are involved a lot because it was a little confusing the way Admentum explained it, but it's this idea that if these two angles are like perpendicular, are both perpendicular, then these two lines are parallel. Or another way of saying it is like, if the lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent is the easiest way of saying it. If the lines are parallel, corresponding angles, so remember when we had this, and we said if we move this angle over here, it's corresponding. The corresponding angles are congruent. So that's where we're gonna talk about parallel lines is because if they're parallel, well, guess what? We know that these two angles are congruent. And because this angle is going to be the same as this angle, obviously, because it's literally the same angle. Then that's going to help us with, you'll, you'll see that there's like a theorem called the angle angle theorem. So let's check this out. So let's talk about these triangles with parallel lines. All right, so we have these two triangles show parallel to AC. So they're just putting a line here that's parallel. And then there's a line over here that's parallel. So they just have parallel lines everywhere. All right, so there's three different parallel lines. All right, so now it's gonna say, check the box. Notice that DE intersects size BE creating another triangle. How is that triangle relation? How do you know? So 
They want us to check off D E parallel to BC, parallel to BC. So they said that this angle um, is similar. So is a smaller version of a, how do you know how it's related? So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say it's similar. And we haven't learned about the angle angle theorem yet. So I know it was talking about it, but the way we know it's similar is, oh my gosh, why does the momentum hate me? I don't know. It's not even in momentum. It's GeoGebra hates me. We know it's similar because remember when we talked about that other one, we talked about dilation. Dilation has to do with the distance away from a center of dilation. So this A, not only is it the angle that connects it, it's also the center of dilation. So we're going to make it bigger. So they're kind of introducing us slowly to similar triangles by saying that hey, these are similar because of the center of dilation. So we're going to say that uh, the two triangles are similar because point A is the center of dilation. That answers both questions. How are these two related? The two triangles are similar, so that's how they're related. How do we know this? It's a center of dilation. And if you want to add a little bit more uh, things, it's like when something is dilated, dilated it is the same shape smaller and that's all we're doing when we're talking about similar triangles one of them is bigger one of them is smaller find the length of a d d b d a and record them all right so i'm going to i like doing this to make it easier i just move this so i know what to write i'm going to write a d underline it and do this little thing to let me have a line under it. I'm going to copy that mainly because I'm too lazy to write it again, paste it, paste it. And the reason why I'm doing this is just because I want to change these to DB and I want to change this one to AE. And one more, and the last one is EC. I want to find the measurements of this, so I'm going to put a little M. Oops, I don't want the M to be underlined. You can put little M or the congruent sign. I'm just going to put congruent sign because I realized how much work it's going to be to put that little M in for all of them. Instead of writing down the measurement is this, I'm just going to write, oh, it's congruent. Same thing. All right. So we're going to find AD is our first one. So let me grab my measuring tools, go to distance. I'm going to go to AD 7.5, 7.5, BD. Let me grab my measuring tools. I'm going to click that B, D, 18.5, A, E, A, to E, 7.01, 7.01, and E, C. E P is seventeen point twenty eight. So this one, they're gonna teach us a theorem about it. I think they should have done it a little bit better where they show what the distance is, but 
they're assuming that you guys already understand that we're going to multiply this by a certain number and that's how we're going to get the a b so instead of going like oh measure a to b they're like we already know you understand that we did that in the last lesson so what is the ratio of AD over DB? So AD is 7.5. So when we write this down, we want, oh no. When it says ratio, I always put this over this, the first one over the other one. So when you're thinking ratio, just think AD over EB, and then they also want the ratio of AE over EC. We're going to figure out what these are. This, all you're going to have to do is just kind of, I'm kind of cheating. I'm using my mouse wheel to kind of move this up. Uh, you guys might write it down. And like I said before, you guys might want to just write stuff down instead of going back and forth, especially when you're doing this. So I'm using the mouse wheel to kind of take advantage of the fact that I can just scroll up. I don't know if this does this work without the mouse wheel. No. You kind of have to have, or I guess what you can do is you can do this, slowly scroll it up. Down here, it's not the best solution, but it is a solution. Five. And then this one's going to be 7.01 going into 17.28. What they want us to do here is they want us to divide it out. So anytime you hear What's the ratio? You're thinking fractions. And when you're thinking fractions, you're, th you're thinking division. So let's find out what these decimals are going to be. So if I do this, I'm going to do 7.5 divided by 18.5. And I'm going to get, uh, let's just call that 0 0.405. 0 0.405. Let's do this one. I'm going to pull out the calculator again, 7.01 divided by 17.28. And I also get 0. 0.405. So these proportions, this divided by this is the same thing as this divided by that. Small divided by the bigger one is equal to small divided by the bigger one. And we're going to talk about why parallel lines matter for that. So now select point D and move it along. Notice that when point D moves, notice D E moves when point D moves. So they have it set up where if I move this point D, this moves. And because I'm increasing this length, this has to decrease. They didn't tell us to notice that, but you can see it right there. It's like, as I move this, this gets bigger, which means this has to get smaller. All right. So now they want us to do that thing again. So me being lazy, I'm just going to copy this, paste it here, and I'm going to use the equation editor to just change the numbers. So AD, AD is 14 point, 14.38 and 11.62. And let me do the other one before I forget. 13.44, 13.44. Divided by 10.80, 80 something, 85. So notice this one's not going to be as much of a decimal because the top number is bigger, but we should still get the same idea that these two are equal. So 14.38 divided by 
divided by 11.62, we get 1.234. 1.234. I just rounded it up. I'm going to be back so we don't call my name. I'm not going to be here for like a minute or two. All right, for sure. So, oh, my bad. 1.24. Let's see if that holds true here. Ah. Got a little too fast with my fingers there. I also get 1.24. So what they're trying to tell us here is that as long as these two lines are parallel, this divided by this is equal to this divided by that. All right, so now BC moved along. Notice that the ratios intersect. When you do that, so they want us to do the same thing, but they want us to do it with this one. At least I think so. Now points B, C, and move them along around. Notice that D, E will move D, E. Oh, I see. They want us to move points B or C. I'm just going to move point B just to make it easier. So if I make this bigger or this bigger, it's going to move this along with it. It's just how they set it up. I hate when they really do these experiments sometimes because I'm like, yeah, but that's not how it works in the real world. But they're trying to say that like, this is always going to be the same proportion. It's going to stay parallel. So because it stays parallel, these lines change. In order to keep it parallel, you have to move that. So luckily, they have it set up where these two are automatically parallel. Notice that the ratios of the length intersect. So what do you notice about the ratios of the lines that intersect? What do you notice about the... So, what I'm saying here is, what do you notice about the ratios of DE? Well, what I'm going to say here is, when I move B or C, I can also say this, like if I move, oh, I can't even move the whole line. So you can't move both, you have to move one or the other. I see that line DE adjusts so that it is still parallel. I'm just saying that it just because it's still parallel. Now here's the tricky part. This is the this is where reading the question um helps out a lot. They want you to find out the ratios and do more work. But what if you look at what they're asking, they're like, what do you notice about the ratios? Well, guess what? We already know that the ratios are going to stay the same. So you can just say the ratios of the sides stay equal to each other. And what I'm saying there is this idea that these two lines are, does this make sense what I mean by the ratios of the sides stay equal to each other? Does anyone need me to kind of explain that a little bit more? Or is it making sense? Because I know it's a short sentence, but there's a lot packed into that tiny sentence. Specifically the idea that when we're talking about ratios, we're talking about two sides divided by another, and then two sides divided by the other. Uh, is everybody getting that? Is that making sense? 
Is everybody awake? Yes. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so like I said, it's a small sentence, but there's a lot packed into that. Um, it's also the idea that if we divide them, we would have to divide oh. them. But like I said, I figure you guys already understand by now, this side divided by this side is equal to this side divided by this side. All right, based on your observations, what can you conclude about these signs? So what I can say is that the ratios of and I'm just going to do this. I'll show you guys how to edit this right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this and I'm just going to get rid of, I don't care about the numbers. The numbers are only here to prove a point. And I'm going to show you what that point is. So that point is to say that these ratios are always equal to each other. So the ratios like are equal to each other. So I'm saying the ratios, this over this, is equal to this over this. on a triangle, because we're dealing with a triangle, on the triangle, when the, or on the two triangles, because we're dealing with two triangles. I forgot that we're talking about two different triangles. On the two triangles. when the sides are parallel. So I'm just saying that if I have two triangles that are basically the same triangle, this divided by this is equal to this only when these two sides are parallel. Notice how I can't move E because if I moved E, it would no longer be parallel to BC. Same thing with D, I can't move, well, I can move D but I can only move D in a way that moves E as well. So those sides are only equal when the sides are parallel. Now check the boxes for this. So we're gonna do this again for the other side. So they want us to do the exact same thing, but for the other side. So I'm going to uncheck this, I'm gonna check the AC. I'm going to delete these. These aren't as important right now. Mainly because the so the other side, the point E is invisible, so it doesn't matter. And they want us to do the exact same thing. All right, so we're going to do the exact same thing. I was really worried they were going to make us do it like three different times, but they're only making us do it twice. All right, so now we want to click AC. I already clicked that. And let's do our measuring. So I'm going to click here to here, here to here, here to here. B to F is the last one. All right, cool. So we have this. And da, 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 if you want, then find the ratio of IC and that. So they want us to find. I see, where'd they get an I see from? AC, where did they get I from? BF, find the ratios of BF to FC, then find the ratios of this to that. Okay, so they want us to check both of the boxes. Oh. They're combining these together. So I'm just going to do this real quick. The easiest way to do this, guys, is just to copy this again. We're just going to change the letters. Highlight again. Go to Equation Editor. We're going to do BG and then GA. BG. A. We're going to change it to 
5.75 and 5.71. Also, one thing that's interesting, guys, is if I flip this fraction over and I flip this one over, it'll still work out the same. So 11.69. That was BF. And the last one is FC. Sorry guys, I know this must be boring for you because you just see me typing stuff up. <laughs> and the next one is, I forgot to change this one, which is 2.94. All right, so let's see if this works out. 22.74 divided by 5.71, I get, 3.98, 3.98, and then I'm going to clear this out, 11.69 divided by 2.94, and I get the same thing. Notice how I still have to do it. It's a little off because of round off error, but when you round it again, it ends up being exactly the same. All right, so we have that. And now they want us to do it for the other side. I'm doing this one at a time. They gave you really, really bad instructions. I don't know why they did that. But let's delete these. And da -da -da. Now we're going to do the measurements here, C to I, C to H, I to B, H to A. And this is where I got confused because I was like, where did they get an I from? Because I, I thought they were doing it one at a time. They decided to give you guys a mix of directions. And then I'm going to edit this, so highlight it, do this. And from here, I'm going to do CI. And then CH and HA. CH, CH, and HA. All right, time to change the numbers. Are you guys getting this? Do you guys need me to skip this? Could we get it or do you guys still want me to finish it up just so you guys can see it all the way through? Just let me know if you need me to finish it. I should have asked earlier. Now I feel like I have to finish it because I'm almost done. 19... <laughs> and I know you guys have to do the same thing when you guys do the tutorial. It almost feels like you guys are doing it like a bunch. All right, so let's do this. 10.26 divided by 4.37. Uh, we get about 2.3, we look at the 7, so 2.35, 2.0, oh no, that was scary, 2.35. Now I'm going to clear this out, 19.73 divided by 8.39. And we see here that if we round it, it's 2.35 again. So that's the interesting part about rounding is sometimes you see that there is some round off error based off this, like GeoGebra's rounding it weird. But then if, as long as you're still rounding the same amount, it should come out to either exactly the same or pretty close. 
So, da, da, da. so we did this. What can we say about the relationships of the sides? The sides are proportional. And the idea of proportional is it means it has the same fraction. So based on the observations, question seven, what general conclusion can you say about the side parallel to a triangle? So what we can say is if, if we make a side parallel to another side of a triangle, then uh, and that side is proportional to the other side of a triangle. So basically, what I said there, I probably should have used a little more words to be more specific, but it's the idea that if I make this side that's parallel to this other side, then this side over this side is equal to this side over this side. So if you make a side parallel to another side, then the, then the I'll say two parts of that side is proportional to the other side of the triangle that the parallel line touches. So this one is very wordy, I know, but basically what I'm saying is if I make a side parallel to another side, then these two parts divided by each other are equal to these two parts of the line that this parallel line touches. So I'm basically saying, since this is a side that the parallel line touches, dividing this is going to be proportional to these two. I'm not saying that they're equal, because you can see that the numbers are very different. I'm just saying that if you divide them, they're proportional, they're equal. And this one, you guys can talk about how, if you understood what I meant by proportional, you can talk about how this was very boring having to do the same thing three times. They should have only had you do it one time, but like we're going to make you do all the things three times or more. All right. So, oh my gosh, that took way longer than I was hoping it would take. So here they're going to do the same thing. They're going to do this fraction divided by this fraction. Or I'm sorry, this divided by this is equal to x divided by this. So they have it right here. They have this. Oh, they have it a different way. They're saying this divided by this is equal to this divided by this. And that's one thing too. I don't know why they're doing it that way. You can either do it this way. You can do this divided by this. A over B is equal to C over D. Or you can have it as A over C so this being the A, is equal to B over D. That's another way to do it. The reason why this works is because, think of it this way. If I multiply by B, then I end up getting A is equal to B, C over D. But then I'm like, well, I don't like two letters up here. Let me divide by C on both sides. That cancels this out. Dividing by C cancels it out. So that's why you can say it either way. All right, so now we're going to do this. So I'm going to do this. I always like doing it as the small ones. This 8 over 14 is equal to 15 over 8. So what I did, or I'm sorry, X. What I did here was I got this over this is equal to this over this. Or, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you get the idea. I just kind of misspoke there. So taking that into account, 
this 8 over 14 equals 15 over x. You guys might have learned this from algebra. If you haven't, um, here's a pro tip. Every time you see a fraction equal to a fraction, you're going to cross multiply. So this ends up being 8x equals whatever 14 times 15 is. So 220 or 2, 210. Divide this by 8, divide this by 8. So you are going to have to do some algebra here, guys. Where is, ah, there's my calculator. Divide it by 8. So we're going to get this 26.25. So I should put 26.25 here. And then they show it, they show their work here. They did it a little differently. They wanted to do the whole side. So they did 14 over X is equal to eight over 15, which is how we did it before. I just like doing it this way, the small sides and then the bigger sides, but you can do it either way and it still works out. That's the biggest takeaway you can take from this is you can do it as this over this is equal to this over this, or you can do it as this over this is equal to this over this, as long as the lines are parallel. And we're gonna go into the proof of why this works right now, which I've never been a fan of these because they kind of prove it regularly and then they're like all right now we need to do the real stuff all right so let's take a look at this so prove that these are equal so first thing we have to say is our given fact we have to say that we have a triangle so we have this triangle where is it i guess they're not going to construct a triangle this time so we need to prove that these two are parallel so we're going to say that de is parallel to ac that's our first fact that's our given the next one is the two lines are cut by a transversal so the idea here is where's my triangle they don't even give me a triangle to look at wow so we have this triangle a B, C, and it's going to be cut by a transversal, this D, E. So this D, E is going to be right here. The reason why I know it's right here is I'm saying that's parallel to A, D. So, so D, E should be right here. I really wish they gave you guys pictures because I have to do it based off of this. So see how D is in the middle here? I know that D is in the middle of A and B. I know that E has to be in the middle of C and B. Just because of how we're proving it. They really, oh, shoot, they did give us a picture. Never mind. I'm like yelling at them for no reason. That's pretty good considering I didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to say that two parallel lines are cut by a transverse. So I'm saying that DE is going to cut, or I'm sorry, I'm going to say that AB either cuts these two or I'm going to say that BC cuts these two. So it's two different lines. So da, da, da. where does it prove this? Two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. The corresponding sides are congruent. Oh, so we're proving that angles are congruent. So if I'm proving two angles are congruent, then I can say that if these are parallel, then angle E is parallel to angle C. Angle E is parallel to angle C. And I can also say that angle D is parallel to angle A. Angle D, because it's E, D, B is parallel to angle C, A, D. So again, just look at the middle thing here. 
All right. And these two are congruent because of the angle-angle similarity theorem. So I guess we already went over this, which is weird because we're studying it later. But because these two angles are congruent, we can say that they're congruent. So this looks like a little minus sign, but it's actually a little squiggle. It's supposed to be like the little, like, you know, the little sign on top of the enye that they call this a tilde in Spanish. That little sign right here. I don't know what it's called in English. Uh, that tilde means that they're similar. If we put an equal sign, it would be congruent. Corresponding sides. So I'm going to say that two corresponding sides are parallel. Or I'm sorry. Yeah. So I would say something like DE is proportional to AC. Or what they're saying here is they're saying the whole side. So DB is going to be proportional to AB. So DE, DB, AB. There we go. These ones. So the reason why it's these ones, guys, I know this is complicated and I'm running out of time here. Um, is this long side of the triangle, because we have two triangles. We have the ABC triangle, and we have the DBE triangle. They're saying that this side is proportional to this side. From there, we can use segment addition. So we're going to say that DB plus AD is going to equal that AB. So they're just expanding on this idea of this and this being similar. They're just kind of using segment, segment addition. That should have been right there. Oh, they're doing it separately. And then they're using substitution to make it work. I feel like you could have combined these two, but they're like, well, 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 let's say this and this plus this and this equals all of AB. Now that I did that, now I can substitute it in. And then what they're going to do is they're going to split these up. So see how this is DB? They kind of, I feel like they get very detailed on some steps and then forget the other. Oh, no. Hold on. Apparently, I accidentally closed that tab. Maybe that's a sign that we should stop here for today. Let me do this real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. I know that this one is similar. And I know that AD and that corresponding side, oops, wrong one. And then this one was just segment addition. This one goes here for substitution. This was the parallel one. This was the angle saying that they were congruent. All right, now I'm saying the division thing. And I was saying that I feel like momentum kind of gets detailed when it wants to and then not detailed when it is. They're splitting this fraction up into AD over DB plus D, oops, DB over db i don't know why they don't show that because they got really detailed with this one um but what happens here is this would cancel out to be a one so that's why these ones are canceling out and then what they're doing here is they're just going to subtract one from each side and that proves our theorem all right guys i know this one was a long one and it's Thursday and you guys kind of want to get your weekend started. So unfortunately I wasn't able to finish the whole thing. Um, so what we'll do is we'll pick up on this on Tuesday. So if you guys are, or actually, let me see where we're at. Yeah, we'll pick up on it on Tuesday. I should be able to finish it because I was a little worried that I wouldn't have enough time, but seeing as how we still have a few modules left we'll pick this up on tuesday if you guys haven't answered the question on what is your favorite song uh type that in now
uh, as soon as you guys are done with that, uh, free to go. Unless you have questions, then stay behind and ask a question. Uh, for sure, Vicky. Thank you. No problem, then. Have a good one. Later, man.